Welcome to Beyond the Press channel. You really liked the last week's workshop related video. So we thought that we are going to start to make more of these because we spent like two days a week here at the workshop. And Hanna is already like really good with the camera. So why not film this stuff? And I decided that today I'm going to do a video that I have been thinking of doing like long time. I'm going to show my favorite lathe. This is my absolutely favorite machine here. And it's probably the favorite machine because it's like so handy for multiple works, projects that I do. For example, almost all of the tools that you see on the Hydraulic Press channel, they have made with this. And we are going to have later on this video interview with Timo because I don't know the origin story of the machine or I have forgot it. It has been the, here longer than I am here at the workshop. I think I have used it first around year 2000. And I remember when I was a kid, kids shouldn't use lathe by the way, but Timo, Timo don't care. Yeah, but I, I remember that my first lathe related jobs here at the workshops where like type of things where there's like outside customer leaves a like electric motor out from the truck. And Timo says like, hey Laura, go put that on the lathe. So at the beginning, I didn't like machine the parts. I just like drag them here and then lift it here with the crane, put everything ready. And then after that, I started to do like simple tasks and I think I'm pretty sure that when I was like around 15, I was already like doing actual work with this. And now I'm like 36. Yeah, yeah, I'm 36. <laughs> so that's like 21 years of using this lathe. And like during 21 years of using like manual lathe, it's like I have pretty good memory <laughs> like what is where and how to use it. I don't have to like, it's a bit like walking. If I want to like move the tool bit to that direction or that direction, I don't have to think that I'm going to now use my left hand and spin this handle this direction. I just think this going that direction and it goes. So that makes like all kinds of jobs really fast. And to celebrate this video, we spent like probably a good hour of cleaning the machine. And the brand of the lathe is Masak. It's Japanese like machine brand. And at least for me, Masak is like, at least nowadays, it's like, it, I think it's like premium brand. At least in Finland, like, like Western machines and Japanese machines, they are like premium and then old Russian machine and then newer Chinese machine, they're like cheap. And also, and then Europe is there like, also German is like premium and then like Spain, that's like cheaper, bit cheaper. Not as cheap as China, Russia, but I think, I think Masak is like premium, but I'm actually not sure what was the, like what was the situation when this machine was made because this is pretty old. And it's hard to, I didn't know it, but Japan used to be like, if something was made in Japan, now it's like, holy shit, that's good. But it used to be like China, but transistor radios, Japanese radios were so good that it turned it around. Like Japan is now good, but it used to be cheap. So I'm not sure was this like premium machine when it was new, but I think it's really well built and there is clearly some like good ergonomics and design choices here. So I, I would call this a premium lathe. Yeah, I thought that I'm going to now like tell or all the like details of the machine. And I realized that you probably want to know how big motor is, like electric motor the lathe has. I have no idea. And here is some kind of information thing. And I'm trying to like, <laughs> clean it. So we are going to find out. Yeah, this is just like some safety stuff. We don't need this. I go look behind the machine 
does it say about the motor? Yeah, there isn't any information about the motor, but we have uh, like current meter here and I have seen it draw 20 amps and it goes up to 30. So I would guess that it has a 32 amp socket, three phase, so it's like a little, like 20 kilowatts. But usually when you are like doing like reasonable work, the amperage is around 10 amps, so like around eight kilowatts or something of like that of power draw. So like reasonable, nothing crazy. And then I think we go from motor, start from the motor. So next the main gearbox, this has like uh, three gear levers. So you can choose high speed or low speed. And here are all the gears. So it says high speed, low speed. Then you have bit finer like AB. These are these rows here. And then this chooses like the column like this. So really simple. And then from this gearbox, this spins the workpiece that you are doing. And then under here is the feed gearbox. So that gearbox controls how this moves when you put the machine feed on. So the machine feed is the mode where you don't have to manually move this, but it goes with the like machine power. And this gearbox gets its power from this gearbox. And here is direction control. So you can choose to go, just go like that way or that way. So that's from here. So it changes the direction before the feed gearbox. Then this has pretty similar type of chart as this. There is like high speed, low speed. Then there are these letters. And then the last is the number. And this is like clutch. You have to open this to be able to adjust these. And here are all the charts. So it has like, there's quite a lot of stuff and it looks complicated, but it's actually really easy. The uh, bottom, bottom charts here, these are for like regular machining. So it shows how many millimeters of feed per one revolution. And usually with this machine, if it's like finishing job, it's like 0 0.2 millimeters or a bit less per one revolution. And then if you are just removing a lot of material, something, then it's something like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And I don't ever look these when doing like machining. I have like my, uh, I have like four settings that I use. If it's, if it's like rough cutting, then I go with the S. And then I remember that with S, like one, it's like about 0 0.3 and then it's 0 0.4. I don't have to look up this. I have looked it so many times that I like remember that. And then for the finishing, I just use like the uh, T and then it's from like 0 0.15 to 0 0.25. And uh, I spin this because if it's like, if there's like gears are like this, it doesn't want to change. There isn't any like synchronization on these. So you have to, if it doesn't want to change, then you have to spin it slightly to get stuff in different position and then it changes. And then the top row here is for making threads. And for that, you have to change this to the thread mode like this. And then you can choose your threads from here. It's the same thing but it goes like much faster because threads has, has much higher pitch than zero point something per one revolution. They are like one or two millimeters, for example. And then uh, here's the power button. It has two modes, power on and power on with the uh, coolant. And I, I show the coolant later. And then here is the 
like clutch that actually starts the machine and it goes uh, both directions and it has this nice nice safety function that uh, when you have your tools here up here where every video people say that oh, you should keep your tools there you're going to die so when I'm having my tools here and then they drop like this okay you didn't drop here but this has like safety safety function that doesn't work very well it's I think it's worn out actually that's interesting yeah but I don't like trust it anyways but when it was new it had a nice safety function where you have to like slide this here and then push down but turns out that after 40 years of work you can just <laughs> You can just push it down. Yeah. And then more gearboxes. Here is the like whatever is this. One more gearbox. And this controls like uh, are we using the like because these and this choose chooses first are we doing threads or machining you switch that from here they use different feed screw to like move the slide depending on like what type of work you are doing for threads there is like different mode actually I can I can if you wanna if you want to like see how you make threads with manual lathe I can make video about that it's like uh, it's like long long story we are not going to go there today but this you, you first choose are you doing threads or something else and then from here this is really like it's not very good here you choose is it like this this that you are feeding or this and then this is the clutch that activates the feed and then you have your these I really like these and then here is like a oil pump that oils the slides and it's broken slightly it should feel from the gearbox oil but it doesn't so you have to manually open it fill it with oil and push from here yeah and hey guess what one more gearbox here is the like is this like drill press or what is uh, what what is this you can drill stuff with this or then you can place the like support bearing here to support this end of the workpiece and we have gearbox here this is two speed gearbox so for like approaching and like just using the support bearing you have fast gear so you don't have to spin a lot and then if you have big drill and you have to push really hard then you have this and it's like one one to four like re reduction yeah so a lot of gearboxes okay and I think now it's time for Timo's interview Timo is not today here but we are going to travel in the future and ask about Timo of the stuff that we missed but before Timo's interview I want to show our new merch for you we have three different designs and this time uh, the shop is located in the United States of the America it's the bunker branding so for the most of our viewers you that live on that side of the lake the shipping is now much cheaper and faster and we have a great lounge special offer first thousand shirts are going to get crushed coin with a nice certificate Hanna, you crushed the coins. Yeah, I crushed all the coins. Are they nice? They are absolutely fabulous. I think I crushed also a couple. No. Okay, Hanna, <laughs> Hanna has crushed all the coins, but I have written all the certificates. Mm. That was a lot of work yeah, also. Yeah, that was hard work. And then it gets even better if you ordered two items. First, 200 orders like that, you are going to get crushed finished sheet paper roll. Oh my god. Also crushed by Hanna and inspected by me 
to ensure the highest sheet paper quality available. So, hey, go check out the merch store. If this goes well, the like launch, we are going to deliver a lot of more crushed shit to Bunker Branding. <laughs> so you can even uh, let us know what you would like to get with your shirt and we try to make it happen. But now to the Timo's interview. Okay, now we are talking. Timo found the uh, instruction book. <laughs> Does it say uh, what, uh, sanotaanko sinä minä vuonna se on? Joo, tää on 1979. So it's uh, from 79. So it's like, how old it's then? Yamasaki Marginal Works. Yeah, it's, the, it's this old. Yeah. <laughs> Almost as old as Timo. Tää on tää, tää malli. Tää on tuumia nää mitä se. No. Made in Japan. Hmm. Mutta se oli auto, se, se auto sen konepaja lempäällä. Konkurssi huutokaupasta. Mikäköhän vuosi silloin oli? Ehkä joku 85. Okei, okay. entäs, entäs mikä on tuota sun mielestä ää, ikimuistosin tai erikoisin homma, mitä tuolla on tehty? Silloin tehty kyllä vaikka mitä. Aivan, aivan paikka mitä. Mä kerroin sen muija kipon sen äh, höyryputkihomma. Putki, putki, putki <laughs> Eli sillä on tehty Särkänniemiin huvipuistoon possujunan pyöriä ne. ja evolut seurakunnat krematorioon. krematorioon. <laughs> Minun mielestä aika hyvä pari. Ne oli vielä aika samaan aikaan. Ne tuli, mä, mä tulostin laskuja silloin tuolta taloushallinto-ohjelmalta. Mä tulostin kaksi laskua peräkkäin. Mä en oikein tiennyt mitä ne oli. Mä katsoin niitä kahta printattua laskua. Toinen oli possujunan pyörät ja toinen oli krematorion pyörät. Kuinka monta prosenttia kaikesta mitä täällä on tehty, niin jotain on tehty masakilla? Puolet. Niin. Koko historian aikaan. Vaikka täällä on isoja koneita, no. niin varmaan puolet on tehty. Eli erittäin paljon. No. Hyvin on palvelu. Kerran vaihdoin uudet laakerit sinne karalaatikkoon. Ne vaihteiston laakerit vaihdoin kaikki uudet sinne. Ja mä muistan kerran vaihtaneen ne yljyt siihen. Joo, siinä se sitten on. <laughs> ja digitaalit vaihdettiin joskus, vai vaihdettiin se pelkkä se näyttö? Ei, kun siihen tuli kokonaan uudet. Kokonaan uudet, niin siinä ei ollut digitaaleja. Mutta on se näyttö, siinä oli ennen eri näyttö. Mä oon käyttänyt kahta eri näyttöä siinä. Se voi olla, että siinä oli se sellainen Sonin isompi näyttö. Joo. Sony Halvalla on mennyt jo paljon. Oh, paljon on mennyt. Yeah, that was probably really interesting. And I want to also point out a couple of my favorite tasks with this slate. Uh, firstly, you have seen this with like many, many Beyond the Press videos. I think the Clueless Machinist series was pretty good. And also the machining the candles, that was fun. And like from real work side, once we had a like, they were for some kind of heat ex and exchanger. We had like steel tubes that were like, I think they were like two to three meters long. And the idea was to weld them together in a long continuous like heat exchanger thing. And for the welding, you need to the every end of the pipe needs to be machined, like pre-machined for the welding. So we used this to do that. And the uh, process how we did it was that we had like, you can put, I don't, yeah, it's actually here. You can, you can mount this to here, like this. Yeah, it's like this. And then this is going to touch here like this. That should touch this. So you can like put like stopper here. And we had this stopper here. And then I think we had just held this on one place. So it's, it was like tighten this against the stop. That direction open this. And then next pipe. And the problem with that task was the fact that the pipes are so long that you can't feed them from this direction. So we decided that it's going to be really fast to have two men theme. 
Uh, I did that with my friend Kari. Kari is already retired, but uh, Kari was operating the lathe here mindlessly, <laughs> like bam, bam, like just like robot. And I was on that side of the machine, like put the pipe in, wait like 15 seconds for Kari to machine it, take the pipe out, put the next one in. And we did like, I think we did spend like two or three weeks of doing that. I never forget that. And uh, then I had also one task, I'm not going to explain it here, it's too long story, but I had like this size things that were about as simple as that. And I did them with this manual late, like 1,500. That, that was like three or four days. But the, like pipe, epic pipe, pipe battle, that was like something else. That was probably like 2005 or something like that. So pretty long time ago. Yeah, but I think it's not a late video if you don't machine something. And yeah. Yeah, let's, let's machine something. I'm building new press tools, so let's let's throw some steel here. Okay, so we are going to make like a bigger press tool that than, I, than I have at the moment. And I have already like the hole there. I'm going to weld this here. So it's going to be pretty, pretty massive. And that's out from the saw, so it's not straight at all. And first we have to change the jaws on the chuck. And while I'm doing that, I can explain like there's there's more than just the fact that I have used this a long time in behind by I really like it. Like I think this is like smallest lathe that is actually like real lathe, like it's sturdy enough that you can like do some real work with this. Like any smaller than this and it starts to be a bit like toy. And then any larger than this, and everything starts to get quite heavy. For example, the chuck here, you can see that it's really easy to spin. And with our larger machines, like changing the jaws on the chuck or anything, it's always like a lot more work than with this machine. Where did it go? It's there. Come on. Yes. And then on the reaper work, reaper work is sometimes a bit sketchy. So you need to like be ready to stop the machine. Like for example, when like cutting something and it's going to like fall out or something when it gets cut. So this has like this really wide and fast break here. And I really like that. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's really nice that you can like do here something and be your foot at the brake at all times. So when, for example, the axle that you are like cutting in half, it starts to snap just here and it stops. So I really like that also. And also I think the size is pretty good for most of stuff. This like, how, how long is this like? One and a half meters, but it's, it's like so long that you don't have to always, always think like, is it, is it like long enough? That's, that's like, that's, that's a nice feeling when you have like, like good confidence that you have large enough tools and you can like, it's like large enough. That's, that's nice always. Yeah. So this is like large enough that you don't have to think about it, but uh, not too large to be like slow to use. Do you know, Hannah, what I'm yeah. like? Okay, I think it's about to go in. Yes. And even I have already like uh, learned something about lathe because I have uh, filmed it so much when Laura is making stuff. So I have a small... Uh, you have like... Like rough idea I what's, have, what yeah, we're doing but here. What's happening next, so it's much easier to uh, film when you know what's happening and what you should film. <laughs> yeah, and usually the lathe is huge mess, so it's really easy to lose mm. these like couple tools that you use. And I have painted this red like hundred times, 
and it just wears out every time. This still has some red into it. And check what we have here. Do you remember where you have seen this exact tool? I think I'm not going to put it here, but you should, you, this is like famous tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, hey, by the way, the holder. This is also, I think it, this is not the nicest hold, like quick change holder that you can have. The uh, big lar the larger blades have nicer system, but it's pretty basic. Here's like four, no, three slots where you can place it. And these are height adjustment screws and you can lock them on their place. And then if you need something else than 90 degrees, you have, here is like, here is like decrease written here down. Just open this and you can spin it and then you have the mini feed here that's really stuck always. This is like basic. But the nice thing is that we have a lot of the, ho like huge amount of the, like holders for that. And now I'm going to pick this one. Uh, now this is pretty large. I have done this so long that I don't like, you should like calculate like the diameter of this and then you have to like check from the like tool pit box what speed is right. But I, I just eyeball everything nowadays. This is pretty goddamn large. So let's go 240 and then it's rough cutting, so S10, and... Chup, 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 chup. Light. And then, hey, by the way, and then I forgot to tell, but this has digital measurement things. And these work in a way that there is like here and here behind there. There are enclosures where there is glass rods that are, there's like marks on the glass rods and some kind of optical reader that reads the marks on the glass rod. And then this turns it into like millimeters. And this is not the original. I remember that this is changed like 10 years ago, but yeah, it's, it's a, I think this is like really nice unit. Sony seems to be really reliable and easy to use. And I'm going to take like two millimeters. Yeah, it goes quite nicely. And you can see here the power draw. This is quite easy job for it. Then stand the second cut. I think again two millimeters. Usually the like jobs that I'm doing with this, uh, the uh, longest time goes into like planning planning and finding the tools and doing the setup. So the cut speed isn't usually like, I don't have to go always full speed. Doesn't affect the like, how long it's going to take that much. But like, otherwise I think I'm really fast on machining parts. And I think that's like, every, every, every like, activity there is a difference between like hobbyists and professionals and i think with lathes and machining i think the like skill level you can see it like how confident you are with the like machine do you have to like take the measurements like multiple times and check everything all the time and how much do you have to look up from the tables like the cutting speeds and stuff like that so if other person is like double checking everything and then the other person like already knows how to do it in the fastest way possible, 
then the like the more experienced guy he can do the same job like it's actually especially it's not a such a large difference on the lathe but on the milling machine like same job other guy can, can do it like two or three times faster if 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 he's really good i think it's not that big difference on the lathe but it's it's still about like that most of the jobs with the lathe they are not super hard like almost anybody can do them if you know like how the machine works i think i could like teach hanna to hanna to do like basic repair work in like one week she would be really slow <laughs> slow on the beginning but it's it's not not like super hard to get like going but then the speed comes from just like doing a lot with the lathe I also realized that there is also like a second aspect on like really knowing the art of machining. I think you have to like know like what the part is for that you are making or then like read the picture and check the tolerances because usually like some people get slowed down by doing like things too well if there is like really too loose tolerance it's not going to be any better part if you do it really into like really fine tolerance so you you have to like know what matters and what doesn't matter and then spend your time on things that matter so that's also one thing that makes you much faster and also it goes also the other way Sometimes you have to know that this is really critical aspect of the work even if the picture doesn't tell it to you and in those those situations like knowing more it allows you to like make better parts Okay this one is ready to be welded and now comes the like uh, sad part of the video the this lathe it's really worn out it's not very accurate anymore and it's really sad because we really like it me and Timo we have talked that we are not going to lose this machine even if it's like very worn out the actual slides these are worn out from here of the closest to the workpiece so in like this distance there can be like 0.2 millimeters of difference in diameter from here to here and that's a sheet load with like lathe this sized if you are like for example like doing like this diameter ball bearing like mount you have like 0.02 millimeters of tolerance there or less so that's like 10 times that so <laughs> not optimal and we have like Chinese lathe, same sized. They are waiting to be replacement for this. But I think we are going to just keep both. This is so nice. I'd much rather do work with this when I don't need the accuracy than any other lathe. Yeah, but like other, otherwise than like the slides being worn out. It's, it's like it just everything works and I think you can somehow fix this probably costs more than the lathe is worth I would and I'm like also too lazy to overhaul this but I, I if I would have like 10 million euros of money or like crazy amount of money I would just like get somebody to like fix this paint this make it completely new that would be so nice yeah so that was a lot of talking and <laughs> quiet <laughs> quite little of machining but I think we went through like the whole lathe and its story hopefully Timo has some nice things to say and please let us know was this like great video do you want to like see more machines I think we have now gone through the big lathe small lathe and the drill sharpening machine so if you want to see more like detailed reviews of the machines with some like memories what we have done with the machines 
please let us know and go check out the new merch store and that is all for today. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.